the Madman. Welcome to a special edition of Custom Cards of the Week. Over the last month, Custom Hearthstone has had a battle royale. There are six people uh, who are special guests, which the teams had to design cards to cater to. For me, my favorite designs are cards that have different modes, which allow you to play them incorrectly or correctly and have a great effect when you play them at the right time. All cards which uh, are kind of skill testing and have a lot of different ways you can play them. Now let's see what the teams came up with. Team Dungeons and Designs. Six mana priest spell divine intervention. Destroy all undamaged minions, restore all damaged minions to full health. Design, five stars. Balance, three stars. Now that's what I'm talking about. Great design. It's a priest spell which is only situationally good and can be played around if your opponent is clever. It's an AoE spell and it's along the same lines of power as Psychic Scream and Plague of Death. Priests also have the hero power that can heal something, so you can heal your opponent's minion and then play Divine Intervention. It's a very powerful board clear spell, and 6 is too cheap. Uh, it is difficult for opponents to damage their own minions when they're playing against a control deck, so I think it should cost 7 mana. Pretty spooky but I think that it'll work because it's tough to build a control priest which also runs minions. Preparian's favorite cards are cards that mix clever mechanics with a well-fit theme, throwing a dash of Warcraft lore or history. Hungry Drawtron, a neutral 4 mana 2-3 mech, battle cry, draw a card, when you play it, gain plus 2 plus 2. Design, 5 stars, balance, 5 stars. I think this is well costed and well priced for a card drawing card. It's like No Mission Venner at a 2-4, but it has the potential to be a Yeti which draws a card, which would be very powerful indeed. Uh, if you play this on turn 4, you're just going to get a 2-3, usually opponent will kill it. Uh, but if you play this later, you can play it and the card you draw, and then gain plus 2, plus 2 on the Hungry Drawtron. Uh, by the way, I think this should be worded a bit differently. When you play it, this gains plus 2, plus 2 is probably how it should read to be more clear. But yeah, solid card. I haven't seen this type of design together, and it does in fact put different pieces together into a very pretty card draw card. Team Truly Toxic Acid has designed Wisp Mother Icena, a druid 6 mana 1-1, one, one, two 6 times, gain plus 1 attack, gain plus 1 health, or summon a copy of this. It would be the card that you would have to click the most buttons for. But we've had cards that have to click five buttons before too, say, such as Galvadon. Design, four stars. Balance, two stars. I think this is a really cool design. You can get seven one ones. You can get five two twos. You can get three three threes. You can get a lot of things in between. You can come up with all sorts of different stat lines. Really flexible, really showcasing Druid's flexibility, uh, using choose in a very creative way. And indeed, in any other meta, I would have actually rated this a five star design and five star balance. But there's one big problem with this card, and it was not addressed. The problem is Flabidness Floop. It would be really, really disgusting to follow up a turn six Icena with the Floop. With Mother Icena plus Flabidness Floop means that Flabidness Floop uh, could just get a full board of three fours, or you could take one off and then get a six four fours, or you can like adjust the health if your opponent has flame strike. It's pretty spooky. If the team had just said, we're going to print this in the next expansion after Floop rotates out, I think Wild can handle it, and I would have given it a five and a five. One of the design guests is Celestalon, a Hearthstone game designer. Celestalon enjoys anything involving stars, space, sparkly things, high value on simple, elegant designs with deep and varied gameplay. Which is basically how I feel too, and it's like the pinnacle of design. Team Bad Girls Unlimited comes up with Stargazing, a pre-6 mana spell, discover cards until their combined cost is 10 or more. Design, 5 stars, balance, 4 stars. Many of the cards in Hearthstone cost between 1 and 3, and when you discover cards, there are three options, so you're often going to be getting a low-cost option included. So I figure if you're expected to get something like a 1-drop and then a 2-drop and then a 3-drop and then say, let's say, even another 3-drop, 
then that's four cards totaling to nine mana, and then on your fifth discover, you get a big card. Uh, and then often you're gonna get low cards as well, like maybe you get six cards instead of five. Maybe you get seven cards. It's a lot of cards. And so therefore, I think the card is a little too powerful. I think it should cost seven mana. Uh, I like the idea of a value priest, and that is a lot of cards to discover. Pretty fascinating card. And it's kind of like the blackjack feeling where you, you can be like, hit me, hit me, one more card. And then your idea is to like try to get as close to 10 without going over and then pick a big card. Team Too Many Cooks comes up with a druid card beast named Fateful Starhound. 4 mana, 2, 6, rush after you cast a spell, this may attack again. Design, 2 stars, balance, 2 stars. It's a shame. Team Too Many Cooks actually is doing pretty well. But they have committed a major design sin with this. It's along the same lines as Vicious Fledgling, except quite potentially worse. Vicious Fledgling was a 3 mana 3 3, which if your opponent couldn't deal with, could snowball out of control. And games aren't that fun when they're decided on turn 3. Fateful Starhound is actually even worse than that. You play this on turn 4, and if your opponent doesn't deal with it, then on turn 5, OTKs are quite possible with the Starhound. Uh, you can play the Crazed Alchemist on it, or Mark of Nature. Attack, uh, play one of those buffs, attack, play another buff, attack, use a coin or an iterate, attack, play another spell, attack. Basically, the card has Mega Wind Fury in the craziest of situations, and you could easily, on turn 5, deal 30 damage to your opponent with this. Just really spooky and way too overstated. Uh, and I think in general, after you cast this spell, this may attack again, is just way too scary of a card text to put on any card. It's kind of along the same lines of Mega Wind Fury is a really scary card text to put on any card. Another guest judge is Stephen Puffin Chang, a Hearthstone game designer. Puffin enjoys decision making involved in playing cards. Awesome, don't we all? Team Dungeons and Designs comes up with Bathhouse of Bouncer, a warlock 1 mana 1 3 demon. Bellacry add 2 steam clouds to your hand, death rattle, discard them. A steam cloud is a 0 mana spell that does nothing. Design 5 stars, balance 4 stars. It turns out that cards that do nothing are useful because they're hand size, they cycle to get a sand auctioneer. Uh, in Warlock they can be discarded, especially if you discard the lowest card. Uh, Bathhouse Bouncer has internal discard to it. Which I feel like is a little bit scary because discarding cards is a design space for Warlock and if you have a way to like get two free discards, uh, other cards that care about your cards being discarded, uh, might not be able to be printed with a card this efficient. The zero mana steam clouds are a little bit concerning as well. They allow a bit too much flexibility with cards like Addison Auctioneer. Discarding the lowest is always going to hit the steam cloud. So the reason for the slight balance hit is I think Steam Cloud should cost one mana. Team Truly Toxic Acid comes up with Mimic Tentacles, a warrior three mana weapon, which is a 1-3. After your hero attacks a minion, copy its attack. Design five stars, balance five stars. A really interesting card, which I'm going to compare in terms of balance to Arcanite Reaper. Uh, Arcanite Reaper comes out on turn 5, Mimic Tentacles comes out on turn 3. You want to hit something with ideally 5 attack, but maybe 4 attack. And then you get to hit it, and then you have a 4-2 weapon or a 5-2 weapon. Similar to Arcanite Reaper or True Silver Champion, just that it costs 3. And you had to take a little bit of damage to do that, but you get a small benefit in that you dealt 1 damage. It's too dependent on what your opponents are playing, really, to ever actually include in the deck, so it's kind of awkward, yet I don't believe it can cost two mana. It's in this strange spot where I don't really know if it would ever see play because it depends so much on your opponent's minions. And it's just kind of in a strange spot, but one of those cool cards that can be competitively costed and then see if someone comes up with the right meta for Mimic Tentacles to be right. Frostivus is a community celebrity in custom Hearthstone sets. What Frostivus likes is cards that take full advantage of Hearthstone's digital medium. Team Too Many Cooks comes up with Crystal Ball, a priest one mana spell. This turn, your deck is a copy of your opponent's deck. Draw a card. Really cool card. Design five stars, balance five stars, definitely takes advantage of Hearthstone's as a digital medium because part of what makes this card cool is you're seeing into the future, very flavorful, very priest with Madame Lazul and all that. Uh, you play it, 
you draw a card, but it's the top of your opponent's deck, and it's the copy, uh, so it doesn't actually affect your opponent's deck. And even cooler, if you draw more cards past that, you can see the second card of your opponent's deck, the third card of your opponent's deck, etc. Uh, I think one mana to draw a card in general is fine. I mean, maybe one mana to draw a card isn't okay, but one mana to draw a card which is from your opponent's deck, or is like, discover in some way, that's completely fine. In general, drawing a card from your opponent's deck is going to be way less good than drawing a card from your deck, uh, because your opponent will often not have the same plan as you do. Team Dungeons & Designs comes up with Sentence the Guilty, a Paladin 5 mana spell. Replace all minions in each player's hand with random murlocs until the end of your next turn. Design! 4 stars, balance 1 star. Unfortunately, such a card is dreadfully weak. Uh, it's along the same lines of Rebuke, in that you're trying to stop the opponent's combo, delay it for a turn. For 5 mana to delay your opponent from playing minions for a turn, and not even delay, they can still play minions, there's murlocs instead, and sometimes, you know, the murlocs turn into like the crazy angler plus murloc combo, and then you feel very sad. Uh, it's just too weak to affect your opponent's hand for one turn, and maybe they just play spells instead. Uh, kind of like in Rebuke, maybe they just play minions instead. So the card is overcosted by, I would say, at least 3 mana. But I would say such a card could even cost 0 or 1 mana, similar to how Rebuke could cost 0 or 1 mana. And we have another community celeb, Scorpiosis. From a design standpoint, my favorite cards are ones that ooze with flavor. Flavor is certainly extremely important. And indeed, I have rated cards that mechanically aren't that great, but have really good flavor in the past with higher ratings. First up, we have Team Truly Toxic Acid with a druid spell named Tools of the Trade. Two mana, discover a spell, or pick a mega bundle to spend three more and keep all three. So the idea of this card is kind of similar to Volterra's Scoundrel. You're getting the three options, and then you have a fourth option. The fourth option says mega bundle, where you can spend extra mana to keep all the cards. A unique mechanic that we haven't seen anywhere before. Design three stars, rebalance four stars. It's such a cool mechanic. And it actually hurts me a little bit to rate the design at only a 3. Uh, but for the judge that cares about flavor, you gave a druid a card named Tools of the Trade, and then like you put like a merchant camel on it? That's super not druid. I would think rogue card. It's always a bad sign when you look at a card and you're like, huh, I wonder what class this is for, because the druid border is like a little bit hard to tell apart. Two mana to discover a spell is a pretty bad choice too, so... This is, this suffers from it's not actually a choice syndrome. You would always just pay five mana to keep all three, unless you were truly desperate. So I feel like you should change the card to one mana and then spend four to keep all three. Then it might be interesting. Could be rebranded because this is Druid, you're kind of making choices. Uh, and I do believe that it is within Hearthstone's UI capability to make you spend mana when you click on the Volpira uh, option, the fourth option. And finally, from Team Bad Girls Unlimited, we have Nathanos Blightcaller, a rogue 8-mana 7-2 legendary. Each turn this is in your hand, gain a random death rattle. You gain death rattles over time. And the first card that I'm gonna trash on, design 1 star, balance 1 star. And this card is a RNG Fiesta. Terrible top deck, so much variance to it. If you keep it in your opening hand, could be insane, but it could also be useless. Because random death rattles, sometimes they're negative, sometimes they're positive, sometimes you just get too many Octosaris, and Nathanos Blightcaller ends up drawing you 16 cards when it dies or something. Eventually it could be super insane, if you get Immortal Prelate on it, then you could shuffle it back in your deck with all the death rattles stacked on still, and then like, have it come back infinitely. Is that too good? Well, I mean, it's super random. So useless when you top deck it, you have to wait a few turns for it to be useful. There's just no saving this card. Nobody would play this card as is, but I also think there's no way to balance it. Such a mechanic is just really, really awful. That's why most of the cards that scale, scale even if they're in your deck, such as Cthune or Lanessa. But a card that scales like this, only when you draw it, that's, uh, eh, no. And certainly when they scale in your hand, they shouldn't be that much variance. All in all, this card is a lost cause. And let's talk about the trump card of the week. My favorite card of the bunch is Rolling Boulder. 
uh, designed for me, but I'm not voting for it just because it was designed for me. From Team Too Many Cooks. Hunter spell, four mana, destroy a minion and minions opposite to it. So when I first looked at this card, I thought of Unwilling Sacrifice and thought, isn't this Warlock? Despite that, design five stars, balance five stars. I think it does fit Hunter. Uh, hunters have things to do with traps. The picture used is really good. It's clearly some sort of mechanical uh, rolling boulder. Well, mechanical, it's a trap. And you know, it's iconic to have rolling boulders. Hunters care a lot about positioning as well. So I think the fact that it's destroying a minion and then minions opposite to it is also in Hunter flavor. And Hunters have been known to sacrifice their own minions also with something like Goblin Prank. So all in all, even though it initially seems like it should be Warlock and Unwilling Sacrifice is similar because of the positioning, sac uh, positioning aspect, I could see it in Hunter. Pretty skill testing and very variable and can be played around because if your opponent has big minions, then you'll want to place them on the left and the right because least likely for them to be clumped together and then both die. In which case, you can bust out the crushing walls on them. Rolling Boulder also has a few modes. You can play it on your own minion, uh, but you can also play it on the far minion from your opponent's side and play it as an assassinate if you have no minions opposite to it. You can position yourself so that your minion is in between two of your opponent's minions so you can trade your minion for two of their minions. That's really, really cool. At the same time, I do hesitate a little bit, like, really? Are, is the hunter gonna let their precious little huffer get in front of a rolling boulder? But you know what? I'll let it go. So that concludes Custom Hearthstone's Battle Royale, a cool tournament in which many teams entered to come up with the best cards. We'll see which team wins. Looking forward to seeing some new expansion-themed cards soon.